continuing on with simulating assessment and treatment and, and simulating problems that you may encounter and the choices that you may make and combining that with the concepts we've spoken about in the past, we're going to go through an assessment. Now, as a general setup, my assessment only includes certain things. I get the gross motions, but there are certain motions that are not included, certain soft tissues that are not directly included, but I will include them upon complaint. So part of the setup for this is that the patient will have complained about pain in their right quadricep. So I'm going to examine it and I'm going to show you because as I've said before, I do a very similar assessment until I do not find something in that assessment. Then I'll add tests in. However, upon complaint, I will also add tests in. So we go to my primary vertebral test. We're going to have you bend your left and bend your right. And again, for the sake of simulation, I pretend that that's fine. Although it isn't, I, but I pretend it's fine. We'll have you lay on your back. So complaint about the lower limb, especially the right lower limb. I'm still going to check everything, see if there's anything else popping up on my large scan. But as I said, I'm going to add tests in. So complaint of pain in the quadriceps especially central quadriceps, I'm going to just do general spring tests, right? So I'm going to palpate into the quadricep, right? I need to have this information to be completely even. What I would actually do is come around to the other side, but as I'm just doing this for the video and I'm simulating, I can reach over. The problem with reaching over is the angle of my arms. So I would actually come around the other side and just lean in nice and straight. <clears throat> so I have found something in the quadriceps right around here where the soft tissue doesn't yield as much. So I'm going to remember that and I'm going to continue on with my evaluation. Now in my evaluation, I go to raise the arm and I notice that upon attempting to straighten the arm out, it doesn't want to straighten out. So I notice an elbow issue on the right arm. I have right quadriceps based on complaint and test. I have right elbow based on my general test. For consistency, I come around, check the other arm, other arm straightens, shoulder looks fine enough. Again, we are working with the idea of simulating this whole deal. I check into the neck, and then the neck looks fine. So, as I noted, I purposefully added in testing the soft tissue of the quadriceps because of patient complaint. What I'm going to do as far as patient positioning is concerned, so the idea that I want the anatomy exposed, free moving, plane or planes required, and preferably visible, so if I'm going to work on the quadriceps, just on the soft tissue alone, what I'm going to do is work in supine, because I can get here, right? I can work perpendicular to fiber direction, so push, pull across, identify what I need to identify, relational motion, keep the muscle still, move the bone in relation to it. I can go direct or indirect if I wanted to go indirect. In this case, it would, so indirect, go until ease, soft tissue ease. I'd be in about this position. And then in order to work with the lever, I can compress, distract, torsion. I can't really shear through this, but I can note the difference. And interestingly enough, the tissue softens more when I create some distraction, the distraction is me holding onto the shin and doing a bit of a lean. It's not perfect, but it does soften the tissue. I can then go direct, hold the tissue still, move the bone underneath it. That's how I would approach the quadricep because I would have done something to it. I then retest, so leaning into the soft tissues, noting for difference. Now, had I actually noted everything that it is simulated and I would note difference or I wouldn't note difference. If I didn't note difference, I would consider changing my treatment on some level. We're going to have you lay facing that way because now I'm concerned about the elbow. I'd like to turn my attention there. Expose free to move the planes or planes required and preferably visible. So the elbow, I can move through a fairly full range of motion here. Right? I can do this in supine, but the reason I want to do this in lateral is because I would like to be able to address the bicep and the tricep freely, right? So if I support underneath, I can 
position to ease on the bicep. Soft tissue work through the bicep, perpendicular to fiber direction. I can go indirect or direct. As far as the triceps concerned, the reason I like here, have that there, is because the tricep is fully exposed and I don't have to augment the arm a bunch. I can go into the tricep and I can pull, right, I can block the forearm, I can push pull across it. I can get into the broad triceps tendon down at the bottom and I can work through that should I need to in some way or another. I can work to the top of the tricep as well. So I can push down, right? Tricep is quite firm here. So I can do soft tissue work here. And I, most of this is leaning, right? So I can do this here. This is an approach I can take. So as I said, I can test, I can retest the elbow, work the bicep, work the tricep. I can work both sides. I can articulate from here. So I can articulate through the joint itself, right? Push through, change angles as is required. I can work through a fair amount of soft tissue. We'll have you on your back again. Because the test that I found was uh, just raising the arm, I'm going to do that again in a moment because I need to retest with the test I found the problem with, not all of the tests. But just as a visual, if I'm going to work on the tricep here, I'm going to drag the arm up on the body, and then I can push pull through the tricep here. It's not as visible as it would be if I was on the other side of the table, but the exposure of the tricep is pulling it off of the table and then being able to work through it here, stabilizing the forearm, so the forearm stays still, so that I can keep the humerus relatively still. So I trap the forearm uh, between my forearm, or between me and between the patient's body, so that the humerus still stays relatively still, and I can move the soft tissue in relation to that. I can also move through the elbow, I can hold the soft tissue still. The idea being relational motion over and over again, as part of the simulation, I raise the arm, arm straightens. So that's how that would all end up looking. In a situation like this where I didn't find any vertebral problems, or at least in the simulation I didn't, I don't need to retest that. I would sit the patient up, just sit on up, and then that's the end of the treatment because I don't have to rerun that test. The redundancy isn't required because I didn't find a problem and I didn't address a problem. Again, bringing all these concepts together, finding two problems, patient report of pain in the quadriceps, I identify soft tissues that are not doing essentially as I would expect them to, and I would relate that to mechanical dysfunction. If that is the driver of the pain and we change it, then the pain may or may not change. If, and I identified in my general scan a problem with the elbow, I address both sides of the arm. I did that in lateral, and you can do it in supine, however I want to show it in lateral, it's more visible, and then I also showed it in supine. And I retested the quadricep, and I retested it through the elbow in the gross motion or in the macro motion, but I don't need to rerun the other tests because I didn't find problems with them.